In this lesson, we're going to use the following question to introduce the concept of combinations. Now in this question, we have five friends and we want to choose three of them to come camping. Now notice what happens when we try to solve this question using the technique we have been using up to this point in the module. Let's take the task of selecting three friends and break it into stages. One stage will be to select the first friend, another stage the second friend, and another stage the third friend. We will begin by selecting the first friend. There are five friends, so we can accomplish this stage in five ways. Once we have selected the first friend, we can select the second friend in four ways, and the third friend in three ways. When we apply the fundamental counting principle, we can see that we can invite three friends in 60 different ways. Unfortunately, there's a problem with this approach. To identify the problem, let's examine all 60 different ways to invite three friends. Now what's the problem here? We'll take a look at one of our outcomes. Here we are selecting A, B, and C, but notice that over here we are selecting the same three people, but we're counting it as a different outcome when it clearly isn't. Inviting A, B, and C is the same as inviting B, A, and C. In fact, all six of these arrangements are counted as different selections when they are the same. Similarly, these six outcomes are treated as different selections when they are the same. So our solution of 60 is incorrect. But what's the problem here? Up to this point, the strategy of breaking a task into stages has worked. Well, the problem is with our stages. One stage is to select the first friend, and another stage is to select the second friend. We are treating these two stages as different stages when their outcomes are the same. It doesn't matter whether someone is selected as the first friend or the second friend, the outcome is the same. That person is going camping. Now when the outcome of one stage is the same as the outcome of another stage, we most likely have a combination question. Now we say that a combination is a selection from a set of unique objects where the order of the selected objects does not matter. The important part here is that the order of the selected objects does not matter. So in this example, we have a set of five unique friends, and we want to select three of them to come camping. Most importantly, the order in which we select the three friends does not matter. For example, selecting person A, then B, then C, is the same as selecting person C, then A, then B. To solve combination questions, we will use the combination formula to determine the number of ways to select R objects from a group of N objects. Now there are various types of notation used for combinations, here are two of them. In subsequent lessons, I will use this notation. This notation can be read as N combination R or N choose R. I prefer to say N choose R since we are choosing R objects from a set of N objects. Now to solve the original question, let's take our formula and move it up here. In the question, we have five friends and we are selecting three of them. Since the order of the selected friends does not matter, this is a combination question, which means we can select three friends in five choose three ways. When we plug these values into the formula, we get the following. Our next step is to simplify five minus three to get two, and to evaluate this, we will expand the factorials and then simplify the expression to get 10. So we can select three friends from five friends in 10 different ways. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that a combination is a selection from a set of unique objects where the order of the selected objects does not matter. Now on the GMAT, the most common question type involving combinations is one where we must choose individuals to be on a committee. Since the order of the selected committee members does not matter, this will be a combination question. Now to determine the number of combinations, we will use the combination formula. This tells us the number of ways we can select R objects from a set of N objects.